Hello, everyone, and welcome to today's live CoChain Q&A with Silvio McCauley and the Algorand team. I'm Kelly Callahan, Algorand's Head of Marketing. I'm thrilled to be here with you today facilitating a discussion around CoChains, which is an exciting new piece of innovation from the Algorand research team. To kick us off on better understanding Algorand's CoChains, I'll be asking Silvio some of the questions that have been previously submitted. Hi, Silvio. Good morning. Our first question comes from Derek Chai. There are a lot of buzzwords used to describe the concept and ideas behind having multiple blockchain or side chains stems from the stemming from the independent blockchain. Terms like on-chain, multi-chain, cross-chain, parallel side chains, interoperability. For newcomers, trying to make sense of all this can be rather confusing. So here's my question for you. How would you best describe co-chains architecture in layman's terms? All right, so uh, thanks, Derek. <laughs> There's a lot of um, big challenges, many chains, and uh, um, a very prolific uh, community about uh, generating co-chain and sidechain. So let me tell you about uh, a co-chain. A co-chain is an independent chain who runs a algorithm protocol for his own consensus, and then as a, a privileged bridge to the algorithm the main chain to transfer assets, so that they can actually be transacted with other co-chains on the main chain. And once transacted, say, assume that two people swap two assets, then they get reabsorbed in the main co-chain. So come again. What is a co-chain? He is independent. What do we, why is it independent? Because they run their own consensus. What does this mean? They, they name their own validators. They give them the weights that you can do, remember. And they run which consensus protocol? algorithm why for good and valid reasons i'm going to explain in a second so there are essentially they run a permission version of algorithm and once in a while guess what the world outside is bigger than the world inside and they may want to transact with the rest of the world with the algorithm mainnet with another co-chain and so we are here to help on the main chain because you as a co-chain you can transfer assets to the main chain transact them there, sell them at an auction, or swap them with another asset. And then you can repatriate money or assets, as you can be after the transaction, to your co-chain and leave um, um, uh, privately uh, uh, thereafter in, uh, until the next transaction with the rest of the world in which you transfer an asset temporarily on the, on the main chain, you transact it there, you sell it there, and then you repatriate whether money or other asset to your co-chain and so on and so forth. That is a little bit of the deal. Why we believe is a, is a good idea is uh, because, you know, Algorand is actually is a good, uh, if I may say so. <laughs> and uh, You can say that, Silvia. We'll let you I say that. Say it. I go on right ahead. Uh, and it's a great consensus protocol because, uh, first of all, uh, the Algorand blockchain is truly distributed secure and scalable. And so if you want to be a co-chain, that's a great choice for Avaraldo. Moving from Derek, our next question comes from Belthasem, who writes to the Professor McCallie. You say that the world needs both permissionless and permission blockchains. How does Algorand provide best of breed implementations for both type? And in a very schematic way, how does Ar Algorand guarantee their synergy? Let me start up with the, uh, the premise of the question, which I believe uh, is very legitimate one, the claim that the world needs both permission and permissionless chain. Sometimes, you know, if, uh, uh, if there is uh, a chain that has to be regulated, and uh, uh, one of the things that regulator may insist upon is the fact that uh, no outsiders can ever look at what happens inside the code chain. Right, what which assets are transacted, how often, or, or anything else. So you want the best to be totally private, and so this uh, privacy is easily absorbed by co chain. They can run on a separate network. Therefore, if I'm an outsider of this chain, I have no insight to whatever is happening over there, and that is an important consideration. So we have to safeguard this possibility, and then there is, you know, somehow the transparency, permissionless, uh, a version of a chain where everybody can participate. It's like, you know, a market square, everybody's welcome, everybody can, can come in, and is, uh, that is very uh, crucial too. And the synergy comes from the fact that, you know, you want to be private uh, and, and dealing with your own uh, uh, community, 
and once in a while you want to very easily ever somehow be show up on the marketplace right away meaning by a, a single transaction by posting a single transaction you appear on the market square public market square you transact there and then by teleportation so to speak you disappear with your new acquired asset whatever you bought on the market into your own co-chain with all the privacy and, and so on and so forth and by the way when you also uh, transact in the market uh, public market square you may want to have a certain uh, also regulators or and say well it's not only i want that you somehow uh, uh, have total privacy but i also don't want you to sell assets that uh, are, should be in the hands of, say, of an accredited investor only. So I want to make sure that when you show up on the marketplace, I somehow no, no strange things happen that I don't want to happen. And somehow we must take care of this aspect too. And so that is the, the synergy that, that you can actually have you know, a co-chain and possibly a regulated chain. It will make it very easy, however, to interact with the, the rest of the world within the respect of the rules that the co-chain has to abide by. That is the synergy, allow, make it easy for you to interact in the rest of the world, making sure that you have total privacy in your co chain and actually respect the rules that you have to obey to not only within the chain, but also within the, your interaction with the rest of the world. Right. Yes. yes. Usually beneficial. Got it. Okay. Great. Next question I've got coming in from Constantino. It's not clear how the mainnet will keep track of co-chain validators and assets. Specifically, will the mainnet have a separate data structure for each co-chain listing all the assets and the relative public keys or just a value indicating the total assets on that chain without listing the owners? Wow, Constantino, this is not the one question. There is many questions. Let's see if I can remember all of them and uh, go one by one. First of all, like, you know, uh, uh, it is in the interest of, of a core chain to make it very clear to the main chain who the validator, his own validators are. So very, think of it like there is a genesis block in which you say, let's say you want to start a low with a low number of validators, 100 validators. So V1, V2, V100. And by the way, you want to say, well, this validator is more special than others, so I'm giving 10% of the of the uh, block generating power of the 10% of the consensus power. And all the rest are somehow at the same level. So you can do that and, and, and you should do that because the main chain, when if you want to have a, a block of, 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 of to appear on the, on, on the main chain, you, uh, the main chain ought to know who the validators are. By the way, you don't want to dump a block completely remember you want to put some hash or whatever has happened in a, in, in a block so that you, know, you don't divulge all the activity that goes in a particular block but only somehow the hash and whatever portion you want to make it up public to the uh, to the main chain so that is a that is certainly the number of validators who chooses them the co chain and by the way the co chain again uh, it may be decided that uh, later on he wants to have more validators Perhaps because something strange happens in some part of the world, some um, uh, cyber war is at stake, and say, I'm going to be more secure if I spread my operation across more servers and more validators than just my initial 100. So you must communicate this will of yours to, to the, the main chain. And who can do this? Only the validators of the, of the, of the, of the core chain can alert by the way we used to be one two three four a hundred now we are going to be from one to a thousand and with the following weights who is going to sign this increase of validators the initial validators of echo chain the majority of them must uh, sign off of how they their number has been increased and the next time you need the majority of this second uh, set of validators and the third time you want to have the majority of whatever the third set of validators is, right? So that is the way it's going to happen. So only the, the previous validators can vouch for the next validators. At the same time, we are thinking about to simplify how to communicate to the main chain. And so we make sure that for things which are not declaring the next set of validators, you actually have something a little bit simpler, more succinct, 
to express what really is going on, what is the will of a co-chain, and what are the assets transferred. And so you don't need to have, you know, signatures of everything, alpha and validators all the time, but we must find a secure way to be more succinct. And if I remember, Constantino, another part of the equation is uh, about the assets. And by the way, uh, should the main chain know the assets uh, and all the public keys of, of the chain? Let's start with the public keys. Absolutely not. The public keys that they are uh, in, in, uh, in a co-chain, they, they better be private. It's, it's up to you. If you want to reveal them, go ahead and reveal them. But uh, somehow it's uh, going to be a good practice wherever you want to transfer an asset or or to use a, a a public key on the main chain either use one of the standard public keys uh, if you so want or you you actually make an ad hoc random public key that is only used for one purpose and one purpose only to transfer something to the chain and repatriate some assets and after that you change that key you disappear you delete it you transfer to whatever other key of yours is more stable and long-term on the co-chain. And so that is uh, somehow a, an auxiliary uh, key just to give you privacy. So people can just say, this uh, new public key appears and I know from co-chain A as transacted. And I know that once it repatriates the asset to co-chain A, this key is going to be changed. It's not going to have a normal five asset. So I can record whatever I want, but essentially it's a random public key, use it only once to transact with the main chain and back. By the way, you'd be surprised, Constantino, that you know, different people want different things and we must be prepared to respect the, the wishes of the very co-chain. So first of all, I, 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 it's up to the co-chain. Do they want to declare to the main chain in a Genesis block all the assets that are in, in, uh, in, the, uh, in, the, in the co-chain? They, they could. Do they want to do it? Mm, unclear to me. It may make more sense to say, hey, I have a best set of assets that I know starting now that I'm ready to transact with the rest of the world. So why don't I post what assets I am willing to use uh, the main chain to transact with other co-chains or with the main chain uh, participants uh, uh, themselves? And I keep secret all the other assets I have. Nobody needs to know whatever I, assets you have in a co-chain unless you are willing to transact them. And why do you want to reveal even that? Well, you know, remember what is good in, in a marketplace, what, why people want to go to the market, market square is that to see the merchandise. If I go to go grocery shopping, I have nothing better than an, an Italian marketplace. You take, uh, maybe these days not, unfortunately, but uh, uh, better days will come soon. You, you can have a nice walk, nice square, you look at these tomatoes. No, I prefer my tomatoes with other vendors. These olives look good here, they look less good there. So you need to know what you want to buy. So it's very hard to have a market in which you know nobody sees anything, everything is totally private. I, nobody enjoys the experience. So it may be in your interest to declare, just in case of other people to know, that these assets are contact us if you want them, I'm ready to go and, and exchange a power chain. So that is a good model. Another model is instead when to say, well, I'm going to keep my assets close to my chest, only I see them, only when I'm ready to transact, assuming somehow that you know about my asset or I contacted you in some other uh, independent way to let you know that I'm, I have actually an apple that you may want to buy for me. Oh, you have a pair, let's trade it. So then at this point, I somehow I make sure that the Apple appears prior to the transaction on the uh, main chain and uh, uh, and your pair appear and then somehow we swap them and the rebuild trade. That is also another model. We are also, by the way, exploring other models which are very uh, private. Uh, but uh, remember that uh, this is a... Um, <laughs> Too much privacy can actually be a bad thing in a market if you really want to transact. Somebody ought to know something. And certainly we want to protect, no matter what, among the possibility that a co-chain becomes corrupted. So presumably if somebody goes through, through a trouble, not for trouble, actually as the interest to start, you know, a co-chain, uh, it chooses the validators properly. If it chooses uh, enough of them, it's very hard that the co-chain could be corrupted. But if it happens, 
uh, we should be prepared of, not to infect other chains, right? But other co-chains, but they should co conduct the business as, as normal. So we know that in payments, nobody should be allowed to double spend. And so uh, what does it mean uh, in a co-chain business? Because if uh, Kelly, let's assume you are in a different, Constantino rather, you are in another co-chain, I am uh, in uh, co-chain B, I'm in co-chain A, and uh, by the shortage of secrecy, we dig a secret tunnel underneath, nobody sees it, and I give you an asset and you give me your asset. How do you know that my asset that I'm giving you, I'm not giving to everybody else three, four, five times over? So in some sense, if the asset appears in the clear, on the market square, and everybody can check, oh, the Apple now is no longer in, in co-chain A, the Apple now lives in co-chain B, and the pair now lives in co-chain A. So if the co-chain A, it becomes somehow corrupted, and, uh, and I... Um, and I wanted somehow to try to sell the Apple again. Uh, somehow the main chain said, uh, wait a second, uh, the Apple according to my records uh, is somewhere else. So I'm going to disregard even your teleportation of an Apple to the main chain because you no longer have the Apple. So that can benefit everybody else. So uh, we are also working on making sure that this can be done even uh, by more, more secrecy, but we have to be very careful and the excess of privacy somehow can, can hurt uh, a, a, your co-chain rather than anything uh, because different regulators, they want to have the different uh, rules. So we must have uh, different modes, of that, and the mode in which you, know, you actually show the world which assets you can transact is not a bad one. The world in which actually you show the asset at the moment of transaction, not before, is also a good one, but you must somehow convince somebody else that you have it and negotiate it separately. And the third model, uh, we're working on that too, but uh, we have to be handled with care. Nothing more excites me than privacy as a cryptographer, but I'm saying <laughs> privacy as uh, also the other side, but you know, the fact that somebody likes it, somebody hates it, and uh, somehow you have to be very careful on how, you, uh, how much of it you use it. Right. Awesome. Wonderful. Thank you, Silvio. Uh, we have, uh, Keith has sent in a number of questions that have um, been addressed, but one that has not been answered is, will co-chain validators be updated on mainnet once a co-chain block, including cross-chain -tran cross transactions are created, and who and how initiates the update? So the update that they initiated the co-chain, so it's in very interest to, to let us, the main chain, know and then as soon as uh, in, uh, a very validator uh, increase or changes or are demoted or the relative weights of the validators uh, somehow change to communicate this to the main chain. And um, if you okay. are not in a rush, uh, you may say, by the way, I uh, let me do some periodic updates, whether it's something to say or not. Let's say once a day I, I interact with the main chain and I'll tell you, Nothing new to declare about the validators. However, these uh, new assets are now transferred to, to, uh, to the chain. So you can do it you know, periodically, or you can actually do it you know, uh, as soon as I want to transfer an asset to the main chain to be transacted from there. At that point, I also tell you some other news, uh, like an update of the, of, of the validators. Okay. Right or um, yep. so you, there are various models. Or I would say independent. You know, I, I have no asset to transact right now, but I updated the weights of my validators. I want you to know so that you are ready right now immediately to you are you have a current knowledge about who is validating, uh, who, who are responsible for the consensus in the code Got it. Okay, great. Uh, I think the next one that we have from Smita, I think you've answered uh, quite a bit, but so maybe you got a short answer for this one, but Algorand's proposed co-chain is a cool initiative that benefits enterprises. Which part of their transaction is kept private and which part is hashed or transacted to the to the public blockchain? I think this goes back to your answer of showing what assets you have before they're transacted on the blockchain, but let's, why don't you clarify that one up for Smita? Yes, so first of all, again, a co-chain is private by definition. One of the reasons to have a co-chain in existence is that you keep the inner working of the co-chain, who transact with what, what are, not with what, which public key transact with other public key, what are the blocks of a given co-chain, is the business of your co-chain. So everything is to an outsider is, is uh, opaque, unless yep. you want to transfer an, 
an asset because you want to trade it with the members of the permissionless chain or other co-chains. Yep. But the okay. one thing that I want to tell that perhaps is different to say, certainly enterprises, if they're large enough, they want to have a, a, their own co-chain by, uh, um, uh, by all means. But, you know, it's not only to be enterprises. It could actually be a nation state. So right now we are seeing that, you know, 80% of, uh, of the central banks are considering, at least, you know, having, uh, uh, issuing uh, a digital currency or to have a national cryptocurrency. And they have uh, great reasons for doing so. First of all, finality, less errors, uh, perhaps a less expensive to manage the money, you need to transport cash by armored vehicles and all this good stuff, right? And uh, uh, people who certainly will appreciate that shop owners, um, you know, we don't have to have uh, extra people at the counter to give you change or accept, you know, uh, credit cards and the like and slow you down uh, and to have a higher, more higher hands at the peak traffic. If you're a sandwich shop, just you need one more person just to handle <laughs> extra payments at noon. So all these are a good benefit for the citizens, but they are beyond that. So a um, national state is going to have its own, uh, its own monetary policy and its total control of it. So only the national state, only the central bank can issue new money in digital form, or you can reduce the supply. In, t in moments of crisis, they can push money directly to the users, not by sending a check that is going to take some time to get there, but just straight to the wallet. If you decide to inflate 10% inflation, that's for some reason you want to do that, you don't just give more money to your local but national banks who then later slowly, slowly trickle down and give cash into the hands of a citizen. You can actually do it, you know, and, uh, right away um, in, in ways in which, you know, they were not possible even for uh, very powerful national states. So the only, Shiba, my only, uh, think what I want to say, yes, enterprise could benefit, but also a uh, nation state to central banks to may actually benefit. And remember that it's also in the interest of uh, a, a, a central bank of a nation state to empower your own citizens to be able to transact with utmost trust and security with each other without any financial friction, because uh, nobody benefits from financial friction. So whenever we waste energy, that's not good for anybody. And whenever we leave money on the table, but, you know, for the simple reasons that you know, there is no third party who adds value. If a third party adds value to a transaction between you and me, welcome a third party. He or she or it deserves to be paid. But if, uh, but if the only reason it exists is that otherwise a lack of confidence, and this can be taken care of uh, over by a national law, cryptocurrency and uh, on, a, on, a, on a blockchain that is really scalable. Why do we want our citizen to somehow burn this money for no good reasons? Because everybody, you know, 6% of the GDP is lost uh, in financial friction and uh, developing countries and uh, uh, very rich countries alike, you know, 6% of the GDP is a lot of money. And even if you can save one, two or three, it's not easy to, uh, to get you know, an extra 3% of GDP, you're doing very well, no matter your level of development. Great, excellent. Lots of use cases for that. Uh, we have a question from Apollo Sande and also from Karthik Kumaran. Um, how will protocol upgrades or protocol improvement processes happen? Uh, do all the validators have to vote across the mainnet and the co-chain or will the network allow a co-chain to run differently than a protocol? What does the upgrade process look like? Excellent question. I really like this question because I, I, we at Algorand care a lot about the upgradability of our consensus protocol, even and our blockchain and all uh, and all the tools that it has. So, I personally believe, and I'm not the only one, that uh, life is about intelligent ad adaptation, and uh, nothing can be written in stone, unchangeable, and remain relevant for very long and the moment in which you know we have no interest in uh, continuing to evolve uh, will be superseded by some other species which is a bit more uh, perhaps ambitious than we are so and we said that as a blockchain we want to be a live blockchain 
That does not mean that everything goes. That means that an upgrade has to be voted on from, from the, the constituency. And you must say that you must have, you know, approved by 90% of the participants, 80%, 75%, you decide. So we have to uh, a taken step at our grant that we have actually the ability to evolve in a consensual manner. The same protocol that we use for such evolution will make be available to the co-chain. So, so the co-chain needs the 90% as well? We choose 90%. The, the, the co-chain can actually ah. say, I want 12, 75, thank you very much, is enough for me, or I want 51%, whatever they want, I'm making it all out. So the protocol is the same, but the parameters may not be the same. And, uh, and in particular, the fact that uh, we, as a permissionless chain, we want to upgrade ourselves with a bunch of improvements, a co-chain may say, thank you very much. I like improvement one, I like improvement two. I don't care about improvement three or four. Yes to improvement five and so on and so forth. The protocol is the same, but they have to run it. And by running, they decided not to improve at all, right? And, uh, and they can actually use it with different parameters. However, one thing has to be clear, inside your code chain, you will give you the ability by taking you know, a permission version of Algorand to have a consensus protocol, an upgradable protocol, the layer one smart contracts, all the good things that Algorand has. And we give you also the ability to upgrade even independent of us by the same mecha upgrade mechanism that we use the main chain is, is yours to uh, enjoy in the core chain. Once you transfer assets from the main chain away, you are at that point, whatever um, um, computer <laughs> handles of the assets of the main chain, they have to be, you have to follow the rule of the main chain. So you may actually have here, these things need to be operated enough to work uh, to be for, on the main chain. And here you can actually have your home version. But right, you know, that, that goes on by everybody, you know, uh, that makes sense, right? It may make sense. When you go to, uh, you cross the boundary to go to another country, there are uh, laws and uh, customs and things that are uh, of, uh, uh, of the local jurisdiction, and uh, uh, you better be uh, updated. Actually, I believe that it is in the interest of a co-chain to participate to the, to the consensus protocol, and therefore own some algo and, and participate to the consensus of Algorand because they have a shared interest in keeping the strongest possible public permissionless chain because that is your bridge to the rest of the world. So if you care about interacting once in a while from the rest of the world, whenever you feel ready, to make sure that this uh, public permissionless uh, um, uh, chain works as uh, best you can. And therefore, you're welcome in Algon to participate to our own consensus. And that means you know, to upgrade and keep you know, um, uh, once uh, we together decide to upgrade, it's in your interest to continue to upgrade. So you are fully functional in the, in the permissions chain as well, even though you keep your assets separately and you only temporarily you want to transfer assets to the main chain and back. To introduce the rest of the group here, uh, I'm going to be joining by Paul. Paul is our head of product. Give us a wave, Paul. We have Jing Chen, our head of research. Jing, thank you. And we have Naveed, who is our head of engineering. Thanks all for joining us this morning. I'm gonna kick us off with some of the questions that have come in. So the first one is from Tobias. Thanks for sending this in. What happens if the validators are not in consensus on including more validators or removing existing ones? And what if the validators sign this off and others don't? Jing, can you answer that question for us? Sure. Yeah, uh, that's a good question. Uh, so for the code chains, uh, they will be running Algorand's consensus protocol, uh, which means that as long as the total stake of uh, two thirds are in honest um, validators, then the system will proceed smoothly. Uh, since the code chains will be of a permission system, it is indeed on the shoulder of the code chains creator, owner, controller, manager, uh, whoever its job is, to uh, be careful and uh, uh, maintain such a honest majority among the validators. Now, in case something bad happens in the coaching's 
uh, you know, validators are not reaching consensus, um, they may end up forking the cold chain. But even in that case, having the cold chain being connected to the algorithm uh, main chain, uh, which will probably be an uh, option for the cold chains, uh, that will provide the cold chain with extra security um, guarantees. Uh, since the cold chains can use what they have committed to the main chain, to uh, recover from such a bad situation. So whenever the coaching has recovered to have a two thirds on its majority, then they can retrieve from the mention and continue from there. Got it, okay. Thanks, Jing. Tobias, hopefully that addressed your question there on validators. Our next one comes from Gera. Can businesses and enterprises seek assistance from the Algorand team? Will they provide support for deploying infrastructure? Naveed, I think you're probably best positioned to talk about this. Hi, Kelly. Uh, thanks for the great question. Uh, yeah, absolutely. Algorand is interested not just in the technology that uh, underlies the blockchain. We're also very excited to support the ecosystem that builds around on top of that technology. And so to your question, we are absolutely uh, will support businesses and enterprises that are trying to build on us. And to that end, we have a large ecosystem partner set um, that are willing to engage across the entire life cycle from design to implementation and even to the actual running of that. Uh, partners such as PureStake on the cloud side to help with deployment and then uh, partners that can help with implementation, et cetera. Great. Thanks. Thanks, Naveed. Uh, next one comes from Robbie. Uh, the question being submitted is since co-chains run their own consensus algorithm, will they have the ability to control their own block time? Paul, can you answer that one for us? Yeah, absolutely. So this, uh, first of all, thanks, Robbie, for the question. Th this is really more less about controlling the consensus algorithm and more about having control of the validators. So when you think about a large distributed network where you're trying to propagate blocks across the world, uh, there are some considerations for things like speed of light, which slows down our ability to actually propagate those blocks. Uh, in a situation where you're talking about co-chain and you actually have the ability to control the validators, you can also control where those nodes sit. Uh, and so from a, uh, from a pure technical standpoint, you can uh, bring those nodes closer together and you can basically run those blocks as fast as you can run it through a network. So the, the faster your network is, the faster it'll run. Uh, so absolutely, from a uh, from a block time perspective, you can get that down to um, you know under under a second uh, pretty easily, and and you can go down from there. Got it. Okay, helpful. Thanks. Uh, next question is from Gonzalo. Uh, do co chains have to use algos in order to pay validators in the main chain? Uh, Jing, can can you answer that one for us? Uh, sure. Yeah. Um, so cold chains actually do not pay validators in the main chain. Nobody pays validator in the main chain. What people do is they use algo to pay transaction fees for the main chain. And of course, within the cold chain uh, themselves, they can decide, however, uh, they are going to use algos um, to reward their own validators. That's uh, in their permission the environment, so they can totally control uh, what how they want to set the rules. Um, but for the mention, our intention is to keep the payment light and uh, easy. Um, so coaches do not need to do that. Okay, okay. Uh, Jing, one more for you. Uh, could a co-chain be permissionless and so become a new main chain? Uh, Actually, we do not uh, plan to allow coaching to be permissionless because uh, we picture the main chain and the coaching to be our um, support for blockchains of uh, permissionless and permissioned. And if some users uh, really want to have a permissionless uh, environment, then coaching will be the best fit for them. But if somebody uh, you know, for many people who believe in permissionless chains, uh, I would recommend you the algorithm main chain to be the main chain, and that would be the best for you. Okay, thanks, Jing. Um, Pablo asks, are there expanded plans for Algorand to help Italy post COVID-19? In what practical ways can co-chains help the country significantly? I saw that there is work to plan with SIA, S-I-A-E. Um, Naveed, I know that you've been involved with some of the work going on in Italy. Maybe you could share some thoughts on that. Uh, sure. You know, Pablo, it's a great question. Uh, we have close connections with uh, Italy for a variety of reasons. I think our founder is uh, at the heart of some of those uh, close connections. Uh, we Let me sort of dice your question up into, I think there's at least two questions here. Is Algorand doing anything more with COVID-19? 
and is Algorand doing um, more with Italy? On the COVID piece, uh, the Algorand Foundation has put together a self-reported track tracker um, that has launched a week or so ago, and we've definitely got some interest in traction there, so we're excited to help in that way. There's a number of other projects being built around the world using blockchain, um, directing data, self-reporting, and other diagnostics around COVID-19 to the Algorand blockchain, and we're excited to support those where it's appropriate. Uh, it's definitely a topic that's of concern for the entire world and something that we want to make sure is well handled. On Italy specifically, uh, we are working with Foundation Bordoni, CI, and a number of um, governmental institutions in Italy to transition legacy technology and new innovation onto the blockchain. Uh, we are have close partnerships with their development shops and their architecture shops, as well as at the policy level to make sure where blockchain makes sense, um, Algorand will be there to make sure that Italy is well supported. Thanks for your question. Great, thanks, Navid. And the the COVID tracker that the foundation has done that's global, right? That's beyond Italy, so I know that's that's that's, right. that's a global initiative. Yep. Okay. Uh, I have another one. Uh, Doi asks, are co-chains as secure as layer one public chains? What if validators collude to perform an attack on the co-chain? Paul, maybe you could take that one or, or Jing. Paul, let's start with you. Yeah. So um, certainly they are as secure as the, as the main chain, given that they're running the same underlying protocol. Uh, from a validator standpoint, you know, the main chain is public and permissionless and that decentralization provides uh, a layer of security against uh, corruption of the underlying validators. In a permission chain, um, the validators are owned by you know the person who's uh, the organization or the entity that is running the uh, the co chain. And so, from a, a corruption of validators perspective, that's sort of um, not in our purvey. So that may happen, that may not. In terms of the co chain actually trying to launch an attack on the main chain, that doesn't really uh, work within our model. Uh, so they don't have any control over the main chain. Uh, so the way that, that you could see some sort of corruption is uh, attempting to maybe double spend out of the co-chain onto the main chain. But remember, they are committing to state on the main chain. And so that double spend is actually uh, prevented by the main chain from happening. So in terms of the uh, ability to uh, to launch an attack, it's uh, highly minimized, if, if, if not negligible. Our next question uh, Naveed, for you, Ariel asks, we are interested on central bank digital currency. Do you know if there are any countries working with Algorand on this? Yeah, no, that's a great question. Uh, I think we're, uh, we're very excited to uh, let the world know about our relationship with the Marshall I Islands and their first currency will be a digital currency, um, the Marshall Islands Sovereign. Um, built on Algorand technology. I think the announcement happened a couple of weeks ago. And so uh, the world is definitely interested in CBDC and it's uh, great to see that Algorand has a platform that we, um, is able to make some of that happen. Jing, I have a question for you from Samantha Griffin. Uh, are there any bridge mechanisms in place or in progress for Algorand or co-chains to interact with other blockchains, i.e. Ethereum, to exchange data, et cetera? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, we are working on a bunch of solutions, uh, such as Token Bridge, uh, to support uh, Algorand Mention to uh, interact with uh, other public blockchains. And the co-chains will also be given those uh, options as well. So for sure, we are thinking about uh, cross-chain operability, and we will have new features released on the line. Paul, one for you. Tomislav asks us, have you thought about, other than open sourcing the code, make an initiative for, let's say, JS developers to make a live web like Playgrounds to spread awareness of this unique and groundbreaking crypto mechanism that Algorand proposes? Like VRF, I'd really like to be able to explain that stuff through interactive examples online. Is Algorand working on spreading awareness on the crucial parts of its technology? Yeah, absolutely. So uh, we have a developer relations team uh, that has been doing some really great work. So if you go to developer.algorand.org, uh, you can see all the work that they put together. Our initial focus of that, uh, of that group, at least the online focus, has been around just pure documentation around how the solution works. You can explore features. We've got a bunch of code snippets. Um, we've got uh, uh, all, all sorts of really great examples. Um, the next phase of that effort is actually happening in the next uh, week or so. Uh, maybe in the next two weeks, we'll make a big announcement about it. But we're adding uh, a number of tutorials and end-to-end -end solutions to help people 
uh, really get their get their sink their teeth into the solution and how to develop and how to understand the the concepts behind it. Uh, the third phase is I think what you're talking about. We're we're really going less into how do you interact with Algorand and more into how do you uh, really understand the sort of core technical innovations uh, at a simpler level. And that's something that that developer relations team is uh, highly focused on. And I think you'll see more to come there uh, as we continue forward. Uh, we have a follow-up uh, briefly. We're going to go back to the CBDC topic uh, from Harry. How can Algorand protect the financial privacy of citizens so that their financial transactions cannot be traced by the government? Uh, it's a really good question. Uh, privacy is a concern um, for everyone, and governments take that very seriously. There's regulations, certainly in Europe, and I'm sure around the world, uh, protecting the anonymity and transaction history of citizens. Um, Algorand is able to enable that in a variety of ways. Codechains creates an enclave, a safe space, if you will, um, for the transaction history to be protected from the outside. But obviously, those who are running the network might have the ability to see what's going on. In this case, if it's a CBDC, the government could see what's going on um, with individual transactions. There are definitely mechanisms we have in, in mind, um, and we are working actively on um, enriching that allow for different levels of transactions to be um, veiled and to be shielded and to allow appropriate level of anonymity and transaction revealing where regulations require that. And so the answer is a little high level today, but I think over um, the coming months and uh, quarters, you'll see uh, more concrete answers as we roll that out. Yeah, and, and I'd just like to add on a little bit. So when you think about um, uh, both privacy and control in the context of blockchains, it, it, you can think about it like a two by two. So there's privacy, do I have, uh, is everything on my, my blockchain completely visible or is it uh, completely private? And then control is, do I have control over the validators? Do I have any, no control over the validators? And ultimately, it's a problem in blockchain, just like it's a problem in every other solution. You've got basically read-write uh, read -write access you have to consider. Who can read things from my chain? Who can write things from my chain? And if you think about that two by two, where there's four boxes, we're looking at solutions for all of those boxes. So um, do you have uh, a public and permissionless chain? a private but permissionless uh, chain. So I can have private assets on top of a permissionless chain. I can have a pr uh, private assets on top of a permission chain. I can have public assets on a permission chain. So we're really looking at solutions from a product perspective to cover all of those, uh, all of those use cases. And some of that would include, uh, to your point, I think it was Harry, um, private transactions on a public blockchain. Richard, a question from Richard. With the main chain being proposed as the only public chain, what is being done to manage storage bloat and network bandwidth consumption for public chain implementations? Um, you all could probably answer that. Paul, you want to start with you? Yeah, so I'll take it at a high level. So from a product perspective, you know, we uh, have a backlog of items like most software uh, development shops have. Uh, and that those backlog of items cover everything from market driven feature requests to research driven innovations to what we call sort of architecture and tech debt internally. Uh, and so we've got items across the board on reducing storage, reducing bandwidth on an ongoing basis. Um, and that doesn't mean that we'll always be doing them. That means that we've got them available. We've got them defined. And as we see things become a problem, we attack them. And that's everything from um, uh, signature compression using DLS to, uh, to separating out storage from the compute layer uh, to, you know, everything else along the spectrum. Uh, but this is absolutely a top of mind thing that we are always going to be chipping away at. Um, and sometimes there'll be sort of big bang features that make a big difference, but we are always, uh, always chipping away at improving our bandwidth and, and storage uh, considerations. Awesome. Thanks, Paul. As a reminder, we, we have a number of questions coming in, so we'll, we'll go for a few more minutes and, and try and take some of these last questions. Uh, there is a poll that's up right now just to understand um, who all is on here so that we can try and, and craft these answers a bit better. We've got one more here. Let's see. Uh, for a newbie like me who has encountered Algorand just now, what is the project's real life use case and application in the real world? And why would I venture out on exploring more about Algorand? Uh, Navi, do you wanna take that one and talk a little bit about some of the real life use cases and applications? I know you've worked with a number of uh, enterprise government, uh, traditional finance, DeFi, open finance across uh, the Algorand ecosystem. So maybe you can just talk a little bit about that briefly. 
Sure, you know, I'd love to. Yeah, that's a great question. Why why are we here? Why blockchain? Um, why Algran at all? Uh, there are a number of really amazing um, use cases that are coming to the Algran um, platform. I, we mentioned CBDC. I think uh, seeing a real digital currency on the blockchain is something that I'm particularly excited by. And it sounds like the world is uh, moving in that direction as well. Uh, but there's many other use cases. The COVID-19 tracker is something I never expected. And now we see many, um, many uh, projects around the world that are using the blockchain as a safe place to put private data um, that needs to be public in some fashion, but mostly, most importantly, needs to be secured. And so um, am I COVID positive? Can I go back to work? Do the core teams still apply to me? Uh, that seems like a great place um, to use a blockchain that is world scale like Algorand. On the business side, um, I'm very excited to see projects like our partner Securitize moving uh, financial um, projects and assets into the blockchain world, uh, connecting real, real regulation and real markets um, and bringing them onto the blockchain where they can benefit from efficiency and scale. And there's so much innovation going on every day, different projects that I've never heard of the day before um, suddenly in the limelight. So it's a great time to be here. Yeah, and, and for those of you interested and haven't looked at it, you know, if you go to algorand.com, right there, there's a list of use cases and a lot of news, and there's a lot of details on uh, the innovation that people are doing on Algorand. Uh, another question comes from Ronald. Correct me if I'm wrong, um, but Algorand dApps aren't interoperable with other blockchains. Can co-chains be interoperable with other uh, chains or blockchains out there, say Ethereum dApps? Jane, can you, can you answer that one? Uh, sure, yeah. Uh, as I mentioned earlier, uh, currently the algorithm blockchain uh, does not have token bridge yet, but token bridge will be a feature that we are going to add in the future. And that feature will be given as an option to both the main chain and the co chains. So, uh, yes, the answer, uh, short answer is uh, in the future, the algorithm dApps will be able to interact with uh, other blockchains. Paul, I have one for you. How do you imagine the user interface of wallets? interacting with these co-chains, taking into account that we'll need to take care of the co-chains privacy. That question came from Pablo. Thanks for submitting that, Pablo. Yeah, absolutely. So uh, as you guys probably know, we have an Algorand mobile wallet that's in market now on iOS and Android, uh, and that gives you access to all of the assets, any ASA or Algorand standard asset that has been uh, created on the Algorand mainnet. Um, and uh, so it's a reasonable question to say, hey, I've got this wallet now. What do I do with the, with the co-chains? And frankly, that's going to be a sort of co-chain by co-chain decision. Uh, so certainly from a, uh, an authentication perspective, you could build a wallet which only authenticates particular users based on their, uh, their keys within your system. Um, uh, in terms of bringing your co-chain together with other chains into a single wallet, uh, that is again going to be a decision by both the, both the co-chain and then also the wallet providers themselves. Uh, I can certainly imagine an a, a environment uh, where the uh, the co-chains uh, have a uh, you know particular deal with the wallet providers and they're bringing together these both the co-chains and the main chain uh, in a single wallet and allows the, the transaction between the two from that UI. Uh, but that's going to be uh, that's going to be work and decisions that those groups are going to have to make uh, individually. That's great. Uh, I know we're, we're coming up uh, to an hour here, so we are going to try and wrap this up. Uh, so I want to thank you, Silvio, Jing, Naveed, and Paul. Thank you all for attending today's live uh, Q&A here with us on CoChains. If you have any other questions, please feel free to reach out at contact at algorand.com. On behalf of all the Algorand team and presenters, again, thanks for joining and have a great rest of your day and your week.